All right. Um, so, ah, broke my thing. Here we go. So what I have in this example is a square root of 36. Now, obviously, some of you might be saying, oh, well, square root of 36, I know that's 6, right? Ashley, I mean, that's pretty basic. You wouldn't even want to work through it. But what I, 6, what I say? Well, if we introduce, but right now, when we just say the square root of 6, we're just going to be dealing with the positive values. So whenever we deal with the square root of 6, we're always just assuming we're just looking at the positive values. However, yes, obviously, whenever I introduce, um, Whenever I introduce the square root, you know, yeah, we can always work through plus or minus. And, and then also when we introduce it, you know, we have to, uh, we definitely have to make sure we uh, work through the positive and the negative value. But we're just going to be dealing with the positive value. And here's what I want to show with you guys. I think you guys are pretty well aware that this answer we're just going to work with is 6. However, what I want to do is make sure you guys understand, when we worked on simplifying radicals, I applied this principle. But I didn't really actually go through it a lot with you. So I just want to make sure that we're going to have this written down so that you guys will have um, exactly what you're going to want. All right. So remember, square root of 36, when we're simplifying them, I could rewrite this as square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Correct? Is that still going to equal 6? Yes. Does everybody follow me with this? Is that still equal 6? Because 9 times 4 is 36, right? Then, what I want you to understand, though, is if I still broke this up now separately into the square root of 9 times the square root of 4, does that still going to give me an answer of 6? Yes. Yeah, of course, because if you simplify that, you're going to have 3 times 2 equals 6. All right. Now, this becomes very important because, obviously, we're not when we simplified radicals, this is what exactly we use to simplify, to break them apart, right? So we could simplify the portion that we could simplify, and then we leave the portion that we couldn't. So then what this does is this gives us just to the product rule of radicals. And here's what the product rule of radicals states. It doesn't matter if I'm using a square root, a cube root, um, a nth root. It doesn't matter what root I use. But if I take the root of 2, um, not a to them. If I take the root of the product all right, of two or more terms, then I can break that up into the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Okay, So this is the product rule of your radicals. And this is very, very important. If you take the nth root of a product, you can break that up into the nth root of each one of your terms. Okay, Now, here's something to be careful with. Let's say we do the square root of, um, what would be a good one, 18. Here's where students are going to make mistakes. Right? This does not work for addition. We know that, well, the square root of 18, um, that's going to equal what? Square root of 18, if you simplify that. Yes, Ryan? Mm -hmm. The square root of 18, I don't need you to work through it. The square root of 18, we could say that's going to be 3 radical 2. Simplified, right? We've already kind of gone through simplifying this. But what if you said, oh, well, what about with addition? 9 plus 9, right? Well, that's 3 plus 3 equals 6. Does 6 the same thing as 3 times radical 2? No, it's not. So I just want to make sure you guys understand, this does not hold true for addition. It's only going to hold true for multiplication and division. We'll get to division here in a second. All right? It only holds true for multiplication and division, not addition and subtraction. All right? That's the product rule of exponents. So what we're going to do from here on out and for your homework